Let's discuss pros. I'm just going to tell you my experience with the Powerwall. One, being off the grid is really pretty awesome. You can save some money when obviously you're not using your local power company's power. So you're using the power from the solar panels and then the power from the power wall. And some days and some nights you are off the grid. So you are saving power. Two, you don't even know that you are off the grid because it is so seamless. The lights don't flicker. You don't get a notification or anything like that, that you are off the grid. It just happens. So a lot of times at night, if I just happen to be checking my Tesla app and I switch it over to the Powerwall, I might, hmm, I'm off the grid, which is so cool. And we're off the grid nightly. Every night about 8.30, 9 o'clock, we're off the grid until about 6 in the morning. So it's a savings for us. The third thing and the most important thing is what I have on the screen right now is the storm watch. So the storm watch mode is so awesome because Tesla's system will talk to the National Weather Service and vice versa. So here you see on the screen that in this instance, and I'm going to show you a few of these instances that happen. A storm watch is forecasted for my area back in June 27th. And now the power wall is charging to provide backup power. Your system will be in storm watch mode until the storm ends. I'm going to show you another example of the storm watch mode. You can see on the screen that right now we're only using 0.6 kilowatts. We're taking that from the grid and going into our house. At the bottom of the screen, you can see that the power wall is completely off. It's not going to receive any more power because it's in storm watch mode and it is fairly dark outside so we're not getting any power from the solar panels so we are in imminent uh, danger of a storm this slide here is providing information now if you notice there's a couple of things going on here the power wall is in storm watch mode that you can see right up up top here it's at 100 percent it's at 8 30 in the morning remember the previous slide i showed that there was no sunlight coming into the solar panels down here is even proof positive that I've only had 1% of self-powered that day. I cannot use the power wall to power my house because in case we do lose lights, this 100% would now begin to feed into my home. And just one more point of inference here is that the sun did peak out. We did get a little bit of solar power. Again, 0.1 from the solar panels, 0.2 from the grid going into a house that's using 0.3 altogether. But again, we're not using any power from the power wall because we're in storm watch. And now this slide right here, the storm is happening. The grid is completely down. We're not getting any solar panel power. So now we are in storm watch mode and you can see that the power wall is using 0.5 kilowatts is going into our home. And now the last slide I'd like to show you is just a backup history. And since this time that I screen captured it, we have had more uh, loss of power. But this is just give you a, a quick example of uh, we had a really bad storm. Uh, it says today, but actually it happened you know, a few months ago. We was out of power for one hour and 28 minutes. That means that our community was uh, off the grid. We were uh, receiving power from our power wall. So our community was dark for an hour and 28 minutes. So various times of the year, you can see even far back as last year, we lose six minutes of power, five minutes of power. I don't even know that because, again, our power wall is on and it's so seamless that we didn't even know that we lost power. So if you are in an area that loses power when storms happen, it might behoove you to get a power wall. Again, I can't make that assumption for you, but it is kind of safe to say that rest assured if you lose, if your community lose power, you want, and which is kind of cool.